Hey guys, so it looks like I might hit 15,000 subscribers here on my YouTube channel sometime within the next month, which is crazy because I just hit 10,000 something like four months ago. So it's amazing how this kind of snowballs. Anyway, as a way of saying thanks to you, my subscribers, I've chosen 15 pretty cool items that I'm gonna give away. So here's the deal. A couple days ago, I went down to Safford to photograph some pots. So I went to a museum, I photographed pots, and then I took a hike out to visit these ruins. So I'll show you all that video I took in Safford, and then we'll come back here after that, and at the end of the video, I'll show you these items that I'm giving away and how you can be eligible, all right? I'll catch you back here in a little while. A couple weeks ago, an archaeologist friend of mine called me and told me that they wanted to get some pictures of some pots that were in a collection down here in the town of Pima, Arizona. Uh, so I made arrangements to come down today and photograph that collection of pottery. Now I've never been in this museum, this is the Graham County Historical Society Museum and uh, they keep weird hours, they're open like two days a week or three, something like that. And, like I've been by here half a dozen times and it's always closed, so uh, I don't really know what to expect in here today, I don't know how many pots there are. Uh, so we're going to see what we've got, but I'm sure it's going to be interesting because they've got ancient pottery that I'm going to be allowed to photograph. So let's see what we got here. They had some beautiful pots there at that museum. The problem was a lot of those display cases weren't made to open up, so I just had to photograph them through the glass, which is far from optimal. So it would have been nice if we could have pulled those out and taken better pictures of them. I did get a few pictures outside the display case, but a lot of them I could not take out. We can learn a lot from these pots, just knowing they're from the Safford area. So we can look at these pots and most of these are Pueblo designs. These are northern southwestern designs from up in the Four Corners area, northern Arizona, northern New Mexico. Now when those people from the north first arrived, uh, a lot of them moved into these defensive enclave communities where just those northerners would kind of huddle together in safety. And these sites like this, what they call Cayenta enclave communities, are scattered around southeast Arizona. So right now I'm hiking into one of them that's here in the Safford area called Goat Hill. So I'm gonna go over there and take a look around and see what I can find as far as pottery sherds on the ground and maybe architectural features that will tell me a little more about what was going on back in the 1300s, late 1200s when these people from up north moved about 300 miles south and settled in this area. And uh, the defensive nature of their settlements tells us something about exactly how welcome they felt here. When you're out hiking like this, it's nice to have some fresh fruit available. You know, out here in the desert, nothing like a fresh piece of fruit to refresh you and make you feel like going on. And when it comes to fresh fruit, these things will literally stay ripe on the cactus for months before they dry out to the point that, you know, they're not that edible or delicious anyway. This one's a little bit green. I think I'll pass. You can see the greenness in it, but they're good and they're refreshing. They have a little bit of a citrusy tang to them and they're juicy. So, I mean, you're dry and hot out here. Um, like I said, this one's a little under ripe, but they're good and they'll, they'll stay ripe on the cactus for a long time and fresh. So uh, if you're out like this, try one of these. The inside's full of seeds. But you can just eat around that, eat the flesh off of it. There's quite a bit of flesh on one of these. I wanted to show you this little hitchhiker I picked up. This is called the Devil's Claw. And this is a tiny one. They usually 
maybe twice or three times this size. Uh, but it's a little pod, it's a little plant that grows here in our rainy season during the monsoons. And, and at this time of year, the plant kind of withers up and it just leaves these little pods and then they hook on your shoe and you'll just, you can carry them for miles. And that's how they spread their seeds. But uh, they're cool little things. And uh, the Native Americans use this for the basketry material, for the black designs in the coiled baskets. And then if you split it open, there's seeds inside, little edible seeds that taste like uh, sunflower seeds. All right, so I didn't make it to Goat Hill. I'm turning back now. Um, it's just really rough country out here. So looking at it from aerial photography and on the map, it looked like a rather smooth plain that I would have crossed from my truck to here. And it was just uh, a lot of effort to get here because as you can look around, it's all boulders, it's all rocks. And so you're stepping on top of rocks, you're stepping between rocks, you're navigating around boulders, so every mile you walk is like two miles on flat ground because uh, you're just you're up and down, you're up and down, you're around, you're trying to navigate through. Uh, it's just it's just pretty rough. And uh, and the part I'm a little over I'm a little over halfway, but the part I just crossed was supposed to be the easy half. It looked like it was you know rather level and flat. The next part actually gets you know some terrain to it. So not only is it rocky, it's going to have some ups and downs. So. I'm, I just I just don't have any enthusiasm for the rest of the walk and then when I get there I'd have to get all the way back so I'm turning back now. It is pretty country. It's just um, it's just really rough terrain so uh, you would well I was gonna say you would want to take all day but and maybe even then you wouldn't want to do it. It's just you know how hard do you want to work for it. Best way to do it would be maybe find a different way to walk, hike in or um, you know get a four-wheel drive and, and drive most of the way there so all right, so this is the kind of boulder terrain I'm dealing with out here. It is just boulders on top of boulders and scrubby brush too. So it's just a lot of kind of every step you've got to calculate where you're going to put your foot. And sometimes it's a little bit of a stretch or a hop. And sometimes it's a little bit short. You can never just get a stride and just walk. ridge where I need to go is beyond that ridge um, right there so right in here where you see that big tree that's a dry lake it's it's actually a, a fishing lake but they've drained it because they're working on it so just beyond the tree is a little ridge right at the base of that ridge is the road that leads to my truck which is parked just over there Sorry I didn't make it to Goat Hill. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the hike. So I have been to Goat Hill. I went back in the early 90s when I was real young. Probably still a teenager when I went up there. And I even have a picture or two. So I'll tell you what, I'll take you on a virtual tour of Goat Hill right now and tell you a little bit about uh, what it is. Back in the late 1200s, when people started abandoning the Four Corners region, these people from the Cayenta area in far northern Arizona started showing up down here in the south. And we can recognize them by their pottery, which is made exactly the same as the type of pottery that was made up in the Cayenta area of northern Arizona before they immigrated. So this Goat Hill site is essentially like a Cayenta Pueblo just plunked down in southern Arizona. It has the same architectural features. It even has a kiva just like you would find up in the Four Corners area, which are practically unheard of here in Southern Arizona. And so we've got all this black on red pottery, which is Cayenta style pottery made with local Southern Arizona clays. And then you have this Kiva and you have all this stone masonry and stuff that's just not normally found in this area. So it's a very cool and very important site. I visited it before it was excavated and then it was excavated in the early 2000s, I think so. 
Uh, they know a lot more about it now than they did then. Anyways, very cool site. What a crazy adventure. My legs are still sore from that hiking over those boulders. Anyway, back to the giveaway. I'm gonna probably hit 15,000 subscribers sometime within the next month. And when I hit 15,000, then I'm going to go in and make a drawing and give away all these items that I have here on my workbench. So let me show you what it is and I'll explain what you have to do, okay? So I've picked 15 things out that I thought that you might appreciate. Uh, I'll just start on this end. This is a mug that I made in one of my early videos. I'll put the link down in the doobly-doo. This is a Maverick Mountain Jar that I made in a workshop in 2014. I used to keep my brushes in this until it got a crack and I didn't want to break it. So it's been sitting on my shelf since then. So one of you can have that. This is a jar that I sealed in my sealing earthenware video. I'll put the link in the doobly-doo. This is a small cliff polychrome jar that didn't come out so great. The designs are a little bit smudgy on the inside, but it's a sound jar and it's pretty nice and it kind of looks old, which makes it cooler in my opinion. This is a mug I made at my Q Ranch Pottery Workshop. This is a mug I made at my recent mug workshop that I had here in Tucson. This is a perforated plate pookie that I've used for years and it's still got all kinds of clay and pigment attached to it because it has that used look. And this is a nice pookie and it's been mine for a long time and it can be yours. This is the jar I made with Hobby Lobby clay and fired with charcoal in my front yard. I'll put the link to that video in the doobly-doo. This is a culinary shoe pot that I made some years ago. This is not the one I made in the culinary shoe pot video. This one has been sealed by boiling cornmeal in it. And that was done up at the Archaeology Field School in Cliff, New Mexico a few years back. This is a little Gila polychrome jar. It's got a small spall on one side. Other than that, it's in perfect condition. I've got two bags of Cannonball Mesa white clay. Now this is the stuff that a lot of the Anazazi replicators use to make like Mesa Verde black on white and those kind of like Anazazi whitewares. Uh, it is a Smectite clay, it will hold organic paint. So I've got two bags of that. I've got a stone of manganese dioxide that came from New Mexico. This much pigment can make a lot of paint for you. I've got yellow ochre from the White Mountains of Arizona. It's enough pigment to do quite a bit of decorating or slipping on pottery. This fires to a bright red color. And I've got one of my petrified wood polishing stones. All right, 15 items to give away. In order to be eligible for one of these items, leave a comment in one of my videos between now and the giveaway. Now the giveaway is gonna take place the day I hit 15,000 subscribers. So it could be in four weeks, could be five or six weeks. Depends on how fast my channel grows. These things kind of fluctuate. So on one of my videos, either this one now or one of the subsequent ones up to the 15,000 subscriber mark, make sure you're already subscribed to my channel and leave the comment giveaway. And that will enter you into the drawing for one of these items, which I will then contact you privately, figure out your shipping address and such and mail it out to you. All right, I hope you win. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.